Hey guys, Steve here for Hooto My Dice Miniature Wargaming. How's it going? Uh, so, we have a bunch of different things to cover in this video. Um, I'm going to be looking at, at my current project uh, that I'm working on right now. I'm actually going to show off my new display case since so I've uh, put my Ultramarines and Black Templars in. Uh, but before I get to that, a couple other things. First off, this video is actually supposed to be a secondary video. I had one all ready to go uh, showing off. Um, the first steps of my new project something went glitchy with it it became corrupted it's gone the videos I originally had to put together I got rid of already I had them here on my phone I was trying to save space so this this is taking over so I'm gonna have a little bit more of an explanation when we get to that but the first thing I'm gonna talk about a really cool thing is I picked up the free extracts um, for the new Warhammer adventure books uh, on their website, Warhammer Adventures. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because I want to read them to my son uh, before I went and picked him up, make sure he liked them. And he loves them. They are fantastic. I definitely recommend, especially if you have kids and say you just want to share some of this with them, definitely pick these up. Now, I know when they first came out, people were divided. Some people were like, why, is they, they, why are they marketing Warhammer 40,000 Age of Sigmar? Which obviously. The books themselves are very can be very gory at certain points. Lots of violence, lots of death. People being eviscerated left, right, and center. Bolters blowing people to smithereens. But these these per books are perfect. I've read uh, the first five chapters of Attack of the Necrons with my son. He loved it. And now we're reading uh, City... What's it called? The City of Lifestone? Excuse me. Which is the Age of Sigmar one. Um... I've also been on the website with him. There's lots of cool stuff. It's designed for kids. There's lots of cool little mini games, uh, downloading uh, images, stuff like that. You get to see all the characters. Uh, but there's some cool Saturday morning style cartoons they have on there. Uh, just short, like one minute long things, kind of introduce some of the characters. But with cool little things like never give up, no, don't be afraid to explore, stuff like that. It's actually really be cool, really really cool way to get kids interested in this in a a bit more of a friendly way. Here, excuse me. Um, that's cool. So I'm definitely going to be picking these two books up. There's more on the way um, for both of them. <coughs> excuse me. Fight off a little bit of cold here. Um, so definitely, I would recommend if you have kids and you want to share this with them, go get it. They are fantastic. He's been asking so many questions. What's this? What's that? Um, but and it, what's really cool is there's actually on their interview... With none other than David Tennant and Billy Piper, so the Tenth Doctor and Rose from the Doctor Who series, uh, who I believe David Tennant does the audiobook for Attack of the Necron, and Billy Piper is uh, does the um, the audiobook for City uh, or City of Lifestone. And so there's little introductions in there, and it actually turns out that David Tennant was a war gamer like us. Yes, he played Warhammer Fantasy Battle back when he was a teenager. So that was years and years and years ago. Well, that's really cool. It's cool to see these, these. Obviously, in the UK, Games Workshop is much bigger than, say, here in Canada or or uh, the United States. There, it's it's a household name. Still not that way here. It's getting there. It's getting there. But uh, yeah, definitely check it out. They're they're really well done for kids. You can see they they still have action, but it's much more heroic. It's much more uh, designed to get the kids excited. Um, yeah, and attack an Ekron. <coughs> Excuse me. The, the main character is about to be obliterated by Necron God's weaponry, right? The lightning arcing from their weapons when a giant drop pod slams down, blocks the battle, and out come the heroic space marines. Just start destroying the Necrons off right center. It's very heroic. They don't really give much of a description. You don't see them, you know, smashing stuff, people being obliterated. That's not the point. Uh, it's much more of an, of an adventure than an all-out war, and it's very, very cool. Same thing happens in uh, City of, Light, of Lifestone. Um, at the very beginning, uh, I won't go into too many details, but, um, when the Stormcast Eternals arrive, it's very cool. Lightning crashing down, and this massive war with a massive sword comes striding out of the lightning. And it's very, very cool. Uh, the kids, my son loves it. <coughs> it's fantastic. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, it's great. I would definitely recommend them for kids. 
so far I've had a ton of fun reading them uh, to my son. It's it's great. It's a great thing. Great way to share it with your kids. I uh, can't say that enough. And if anybody has an issue saying, oh, they shouldn't, they, sh they shouldn't, uh, uh, why are they making this for kids? It's because they're the next generation. If they are the next group of kids. They're going to start picking up dice, picking up models, painting them. And they're going to keep this hobby going once, you know, we've grown out of it or we stop playing it. We lose interest, whatever. These guys are going to pick up after us. So it's important that we get this to them. It's important that they learn this, right? My son wants to play or not. I don't care. If he does, great. If he doesn't, great. But at least I get to share this with him while, he, while I still can. Um, so enough about that. So on the next bit, uh, I'm going to go table down a minute. So originally... <clears throat> This project, as I said, had a video before. I'm going to go over it in a second. We're going to head there now, and we're going to see what my next project is. Let me work on the next little while. See you in a minute. So this is going to be my next project. It, uh, it is a Predator Annihilator, or just as a standard Predator now. Back in the day, uh, you actually had a couple different options for your Predators. You, you had actually uh, two choices in the heavy support uh Section there, you had a Predator Destructor, which came with the auto cannons and heavy bolters, and a Predator Annihilator, which came with all the last cannons. Now, um, obviously, I've worked on this beforehand. I had, instead of having a door here, let me move that. I actually had the side spots and uh, rails here. Unfortunately, uh, as you can see, this tank is old. I've had this thing for a mile. It's not even fully painted. I got this way, way back in, in early 3rd Ed. That it's been languishing in my bit stores forever. I just never got around to it. I tried. I've, I've repaired it a few times over the years. I've used it maybe once or twice. Unfortunately, the little plastic attachments that held the spawns in just gave out. It was over. I tried pinning them before. Things were just falling apart. So what I did instead is I, I had to carve them out. Because I used, I think, plastic glue back in the day, which was kind of fun. Um, put doors on. And I actually had a, the the original uh, you know, slot there. Obviously, it's switched around. This usually is up here. But it just looked weird to me to have, say, a turret up here, but missing the, the guns on the side. With, without the guns, it just looks weird. So I actually took that out, too, and put it back here so that I can have my turret, if I can get it in here. Hello, turret, go in. At the back. <coughs> Excuse me. It looks a little bit more like a Razorback this way, which I'm perfectly fine with. But uh, that is going to be my next project, an Annihilator. Get this thing painted up, uh, paint up the standard of the rest of the army. Um, it just, it needs it badly. Even, like, if you look there, it's not painted under there. This was a long, long, long time ago. Don't, don't judge me. I was young. I didn't know any better. Please don't judge me. <sighs> Anyways, uh, the second part of this, obviously, I can't have a tank without a lovely little... Tech Marine. Again, he's another really old model. Uh, I believe he's a second end model. Um, he's had some change over the years. He's got actually an arm from the old Space Marine Command Sprue from back in the day. Um, he's honestly not that bad. My painting could improve by the time I got this model, put him together. This guy all he really needs is a little bit of TLC here and there, um, <clears throat> some washes, some highlights here and there, and he should be good to go. So that is the next project. I'm really excited to do this. Um, I was actually a little worried about about the uh, the predator here. Didn't I, I? was actually dreading the fact that I I may have had to scrap it all together, or just turn it into a rhino or something. I uh, I had to go back to the codex and look through and go, oh my god, please, please let me be able to have a predator without side sponsors. And you can. So this will be um, this will be a, another heavy support choice for my army. Me a nice annihilator, some anti armor. Now, part of the reason why I picked this is because of uh, Wolf Brother Mythos, a Frost and Fist. He uh, made a comment on my last video where I showcased my Ultramarine army in uh, most of its glory. Uh, still a few characters I didn't put out there, that, but uh, he stated, and quite correctly, that I didn't have enough anti armor. And he's right, I really don't. And uh, I mean, it's weird. I know uh, it, it kind of has to do with the meta that I've had, I've experienced in my local area over the years. There's just never been a lot of armor, lots of infantry, but never a lot of armor. And I've come up against some armor, heavy armor, like heavy armored armies. 
I can't talk right now. And uh, I've suffered because of it. But for the most part, it's lots of infantry. So my army is designed to take out infantry. But he's right. I need some. I need something to take out the heavy armor. So uh, Predator Annihilator it is. So that is the next big project. Who took my dice miniature wargaming? So you guys, here is my new display case my wife managed to pick up for me. Let's open her on up here. Oof. And there is a shelf full of ultramarines. So you can see my dreadnoughts, rhinos, scouts, lots and lots of tactical marines. Got a whole bunch of captains, my six company marines, second, fourth. Obviously I have uh, Calgar and Tigerius, Cassius, a whole bunch of captains there. All sorts of more second company, a whole bunch of company veterans. Oh, you know, and my attack bike in the back there. I need to make more of those. Those things are fantastic. Um, obviously we have some Tellian in the back there with a whole bunch of scouts. So and uh, it's crazy. It it just fit. Once I get my annihilator done, I have a drop pod to do as well. I don't I don't know where I'm gonna put them all. I'll have to get another shelf in there. And now the bottom. Last but not least, Black Templars. Lots of Crusading Marines there. Some Terminators. A couple of Vindicators, a Rhino. My uh, homemade Emperor's Champion there. My Chaplain, very, very important. And there it is. So yeah, my wife got that for me. I'm very grateful for that. Very, very happy. He said that top level barely contained my Ultra Marines. It's a lot of, it's a lot of Marines. I'm very, very happy with that. There we go. Uh, so there you go guys, there's my new project, my awesome display case that my fantastic wife got for me. I uh, got it for free too, which is fantastic. She's got a, a weird psychic talent for getting stuff cheap for free. It's freaky. It's freaky. But there you go guys. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. I can't wait to get that Annihilator done and, and add it to my force. Uh, the same with the, uh, the Tech Marine. Always got to have a few Tech Marines around. Keep your machines running, right? Um... Like I said, check out those books, the Warhammer Adventures. Uh, especially if you, you know, something you want to share with your kids. Definitely something I recommend. Definitely very much. Uh, I think it's a great way getting uh, younger readers in. Uh, it's a much more family fr family friendly book. So if that's not your thing, that's cool too. But definitely, I would recommend them. My son has loved them. He's he he asks me every night. Excuse me, every night. Dad, can we read the book? Can we read the book? Can we read the book? So definitely recommend that. Um, I'm gonna leave it there guys Questions comments throw them down below and as always um, If you like what you saw hit the like button share with your friend family and friends Subscribe if you have I always like to see new people join the group the community here and hit the little icon the little bell icon keep yourself updated and uh, My new saying remember share the hobby love spread the hobby love however you want to say it just get it out there Help people if, if, if they're having trouble painting the models. Give them a hand. Whatever you do to help build the community and make it better for everybody. And as always, as always, keep rolling those dice. We'll see you later. Bye, guys.